everyone welcome to the next video in this series from um, Rita Berman's Asian book um, we're doing some of these fun little um, bikinis and swimming costumes um, we're using Tombow Erogeton pencils um, it's partly a way of showing you what they look like and uh, I've been asked to uh, to demonstrate them so that's what I'm doing so we're going to start with this one today so let's come in a bit closer and get going. I think we need some pinks. So that's what we're going to do. It's quite a daring little bikini, isn't it? Never catch me wearing something like that. <laughs> right, let's start. Now we've got quite a lot of really fluorescent pinks and I don't see why we shouldn't have a go with them really. Um, I think we'll start with this one. This is um, this is actually called a plastic pink. Look at it. It's in the sort of neon, I think it's F, it's fluorescent um, range, really bright. And I'm thinking, why not for a sw summer sort of swimsuit? So I'm thinking some of the aspects I'll do in this. I'm going to do the, uh, the, uh, the, the ties, strings, I don't know what you call them, in this. I'm just putting the colour down. I'm not really thinking too much about it. I'm going to try and make it a little bit dark on the edges not sure how well fluorescents do uh, I'm layering up and looking darker uh, yeah I think we'll try and do them darker on the edge a little bit lighter in the middle so yeah it's really bright but that's okay we'll mix it up with other pinks and uh, I think it's perfectly acceptable to have a very fluorescent looking um, swimsuit why not although I do think um, plain colours are very elegant but I don't wear swimsuits I don't like swimming so uh, various reasons not a very strong swimmer um, and uh, yeah just not, not doesn't really fill me with joy so I don't do it. I used to when the children were younger um, and they liked swimming. So if we were on holiday or going to a pool or something like that, I would uh, swim with them so that they, because having two of the same age, it was always nice to have two adults, you know. Although I'm not a strong swimmer, we would stay in the shallow water. And of course there would be a lifeguard so you could easily shout if you needed help. My husband did swim once with my boys on his own and my son one of them decided to go on a slide into the water and he sorry was I shadowing it anyway he slid into the water and um he um he couldn't find his feet and he was under for so long I was watching I wasn't in the pool it was so scary my husband couldn't go down the slide because it was a kiddie one this is peony pink he went up to the top which was rather foolish and uh, watched my son go down and then he was trying to go back round and down the ladder because he couldn't slide down it because it was too narrow. I'm going to do the edges a little bit darker than the middle for this bit I think. Just to give it a bit of shape. Um, the lifeguard was taking off her t-shirt about to jump in and uh, luckily he surfaced. I mean it was shallow water but he just didn't know how to find his feet because he'd not had any swimming lessons. So I did get him some lessons. Both boys had a few swimming lessons. They're not strong swimmers still, but they know how to find their feet, which is really important. I don't know if you know what I mean. I'm going to make this side darker so that we can bring some shape into it like we did with the costume at the top. So basically they can put their feet on the bottom um, if they're in a shallow enough water. Now around here we have a lot of water. We have a river and a canal and they're shallow. So you're not going to drown as long as you can find your feet and stand up. So uh, the fact that they can do that now is really important and they can't, they can swim a bit, not strong swimmers, but you wouldn't need to be. Um, yeah, make that darker. Um, you know, you just need to be able to um, make sure you can stand up and then you can wade to the edge. Pulling yourself out could be tricky because the bank's quite high, but as long as you're okay, you can just shout for help or whatever. It doesn't happen around here. People don't fall in the water. But you don't want to tempt fate, do you? Now, I am going to use a 
lighter colour for the main part of the fabric. I'm just having a little look at what we've got. Um, I quite like the orchid pink. It isn't one of the palest, but we use a slightly paler one. There we go, orchid pink, um, for, um, for the lacy bit, I think. Now again here, I'm going to um, try and make it a little bit darker on the edges. But I do want to build up enough colour so you can see it as well because it's this isn't the palest either. There's some of them are a lot paler, but uh, that's okay. It's nice to have a variation. I do think maybe the very very pale set I'm less likely to use um, because they really are very very light. But um, I think it's just a matter of finding the right place for them. Like if you want to do, say, a white flower, um, sometimes you need a colour to produce a little bit of colour or shadow or just something. You don't just want to leave it white. So that's where some very pale colours can come in quite handy. So, you know, uh, yeah, we do this one. So uh, I think they've got their uses. It's just some people just may never use one that pale. Um, and because they come in the sets, then you get them if you want the pretty boxes. But if you buy them open stock, then you can just pick and choose the colours that you think you'll use, which might make them better value for money if you do it that way, rather than buying a box with some in that you don't think you're going to use. It's, um, it's a very personal decision, really. I'm going to make that darker there and fade it in. Yeah, when we went to um, centre parks on holiday, I refused to swim. I just didn't want to. And my husband took the children. They were a lot older and they'd had lessons and you had to swim. But they went on the sort of rapids and it said that it was only for stronger swimmers and I don't know why he took them. And they all got pushed, shoved under the water, which wasn't very good um, and struggled to get back out again. But anyway... Um, I'm going to use a paler one now. I'm going to grab the rose pink, if I can find it. Where are you? Hmm. That must be it there. I, it's really hard to see the names on these. Yeah, there it is, which is a disadvantage. I think, although it looks elegant because it's printed in silver, I think printing in black would just be far more practical for everybody. So this is the lace. You can see how pale it is. I'm building it up. It looks quite similar to this actually as I build the colour up. But um, one layer is quite pale. Hmm. It's actually much darker than I thought. And my swatch chart looks much paler. It is P, which is the pale. But I guess the other one. The orchid pink is a pale set as well, so I guess they're both quite pale. You could leave the lace white, of course. It, I think it would look pretty in white, but I just want to colour everything in. <laughs> colour, colour. That's what I want to do. I can hear a breakfast bowl tinkling. It is ten past eleven and I suspect it is my neighbour eating her breakfast. She is lovely. She um, she doesn't get up that late but she just has a coffee in the morning and then has her breakfast much later. And uh, that's that's fine. She'll go, oh, you must think I'm terribly late. It doesn't matter. It doesn't worry me. Right, we have this little pretty pattern on here. Um, I'm thinking I don't really want to pick another pink. I'm thinking it looks a little bit leaf-like or heart-like, but I think maybe let's let's do it green as if it were leaves. Um, I'm just trying to pick a colour that I think matches. I think the parrot green will go really well. It's quite vibrant, um, but I think it'll work. It's in the V section, which is the vivid, I think. I'm guessing. I don't remember. I really should remember this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, parrot green. I'm not going to layer it up too much because it's really quite bright. But I just want a different colour. And I think this slightly bluey green matches with the pink better than um, some of the more, the olive 
like we used it up here. So. so let's just, yeah, I'm just trying to make sure it's even without putting too many layers down because I don't want it to jump off the page too much. I want it all to look blend this similar, you know. Although here we're gonna I've got a few ideas for this bit. I don't know if it'll work. But you can um, can but try. So yeah I'm thinking that looks like it might be jewelled in some way. We could try and make it look a bit shiny. But I'm not sure if I've got a cold grey colour. But uh, we'll see. As I say, you can but try. So there is the green. Now we'll do the inside of the knickers. Um, I'm thinking a sort of really light. Um, I'm thinking, hmm, a really pale, maybe the cameo pink might work. So I'm thinking, you know, it's usually like a nice satiny sort of fabric inside, nice and soft. So, and usually white or quite pale, so I'm not really very well in shot, are we? They are cameo pink, that's better. So I sort of go in here, it's quite light. I'm not going to worry about shading. I'm just going to put enough layers down so you can see there's a colour there. But I don't want it to be. It looks white in my camera. It doesn't to my eye. Let's put another layer in. I don't know if you can even see there's anything. No, I can. It's really hard. I brightened my little um, camera viewfinder so I can see better. I think um, I think you can see it. Okay, so the sort of brooch part, um, I really want a sort of grey. Um, let me have a look at my chart. Here are the greys. See, they're all quite brown. The silver grey, I guess, is going to be the silver. Let's, have, let's give it a go. It's a little bit paler than I would normally use, but we'll try. Let's see. Okay, so... The sort of setting I'm thinking is this bit. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do this bit. So let's make it quite dark here. So I'm just going to... And then lighter towards the top and bottom, leaving a bit of white like that. I'm sort of hoping that that looks shiny. Hmm. I don't know. It's a bit small. And then... I'm thinking all these bits could look a bit shiny, like they're beads. Um, could you see an enemy pink? Does it, have we use that? No, it's really bright. I think it might just work. We'll see, you can judge. So here it is. Ooh, an enemy pink. And what I'm going to do is go around the edges of each one. And then try and leave a lighter bit in the centre to make it look like it's a bit rounded and shiny at the same time. They're quite small areas we're going to struggle when we get to the next bit. But I'm going to try my hardest and that's all I can do. That one's a bit pale, isn't it? There we go. Now would these feel quite um, soft when you use them? Which is odd. I mean, they're a hard pencil, but they glide quite nicely on the paper. They don't feel scratchy or anything like that, which is nice. No one likes scratchy pencils. I've got a few that are. Occasionally have a little scratchy bit in. Not had that with these. Not used these loads, though. Now, that doesn't really stand out yet, but I'm going to get some white now. I'm not going to use the Posca because um, it's a bit big, the nib. I'm going to use my 05 Jelly Roll, this one. This one's quite a small nib, which I think will work better. I'm only going to put white on this piece. I'm going to do it on the side. Let's just do a bit of scribbling. 
try and get it to show up. Is there any problem with the small nib? Is it deposits such a small amount that you can't see it? Hopefully, I'm going to put some on that side. Mm. Let's go for a... I'm going to... I'm going to give in. <laughs> Let's use the Posca. You'll be able to see it, that's for sure. There we go. Now, I wouldn't do this on a Castle Arts Arteza or Prismacolor in this colour because they always go neon. There we go. There's a bit of shine. That's better. There we are. So there is our first little swimsuit. We're going to do another one as well. Um, I thought we could do this one. Now I'm thinking, let's try some sort of reds and oranges. I was just going to do orange, but we don't have enough. We could do yellows and oranges, I suppose. Yeah, let's go for yellow and oranges. That might work um, better um, than reds because my yellows and oranges are on the same bit of my, in the same part of my pencil case. <laughs> the reds are across on the other side. Okay. Where should we start? Well, let's start with this collar, the edging. I'm thinking, let's do the edging dark. So my darkest orange is the tangerine orange. And so I'm going to do the edges here. I'm just going to put a light layer over first. Like that. You can see it doesn't look too vibrant. But now I'm going to build that up because I want it to be... This is a V, so it's a vivid one. And I thought it would be nice to have a darker colour for the sort of edges to sort of frame our item almost. So I'm just going to layer it up a bit until we get a darker colour. And what's quite nice is you can see that it can be really vivid. It's not fluorescent or neony like some of them, but it can also be paler. So if I just put down a light layer here, you can see you get a really pale. So it depends what you're looking for. Here I actually want it darker here. And here, where Rita's actually drawn us some lines a bit paler in the middle. We can do that with this one because of it being a nice vivid colour. I just got some post, it made me jump and that's why I went out the line. <laughs> the post box going. I'm not used to having posts. We've been getting only a couple of posts a week um, due to, I think it's just staff shortages at our post office. Um, there's been a lot of complaints about it. I mean, it's not ideal, but really, if they haven't got the stuff, they haven't got the stuff, what can they do? You know, Even our post office wasn't opening every day because of problems, so it's just employment. And here I'm just going to make it darker on the edges. There we go. I'm going to go and see what the post is and then come back. Hold on a minute. Right, yes, my husband had ordered something. He said I'm to expect it. And that's what it was, so that's absolutely fine. Now, I am going to go for the um, um, yolk yellow for the next... Mm. Actually, I was going to do this, but this is leaves. So we can do some green. Let's use the yolk yellow for the background. Um, yeah. Or should we use the dandelion? Mm, I'll show you. What would you use? We've got... This is the yolk yellow. Or the dandelion. I'm going to go for that. Although, is it a bit bright? No. I'm going to use a firefly yellow. I've changed my mind entirely. I don't know what you would have used. You didn't shout loudly enough and tell me. <laughs> so here we are, firefly yellow. And this is just going to be our background, so I'm going to just pop it down all over, really. Now, it, it is from the F set, which I think is the fluorescent. 
but I'm not sure. But it's not as fluorescent as that pink we used on the last one. But it's quite nice being fairly bright. So I hope everyone's good today. I think it's going to be, is it Wednesday? Are with you? No, yes, yes, I'm just trying to remember. I'm actually um, not that far ahead with my videos at the moment. Because, um, uh, as I say, I've been, um, these bits need to be this colour too. I've been uh, sort of supervising my boys for a vision really. And it has, I haven't enjoyed having the time off. Sometimes I feel like I need a little break from recording and I get back to it and I feel, you know, refreshed. But I didn't really need it and I never think I need it. And sometimes I am have an enforced break and I feel better for it. But I didn't think I need it and I didn't. And, you know, it's nice to be getting back to it. But I don't feel like I'm refreshed or anything because I didn't need the break to start with. But anyway... Um, I've got a big series um, for the mornings, which I recorded. I'm just doing a bit extra on the edges. I've got these dots that Rita's drawn. I'm not going to worry about those. I'm just trying to do the edges a little bit more, just to give that shape that I've been looking for in my uh, clothing. I'm not sure how evident that really is. I'm going to do the belt before we move away from our yellows. I s oh. I feel like I need a goldish colour, and actually those are with my browns. Um, um, what have we got here? The bamboo, I actually think, um, is quite a good goldish colour. You'll see. Yeah, just give it a sharp and... Um, the best hint I can give you with hard pencils is to sharpen because they uh, they get into the tooth of the paper better. So I'm going to fade that a bit towards the middle. It's a little bit orangey. Probably doesn't matter. So just fade it towards that centre bit there and hopefully it will look a little bit shiny. Just building that colour up on the edge a bit. Basically, you just want to fade it down towards that centre bit. Well, I don't know if it looks shiny, but I think it still works. Right, green for our leaves. Now, what sort of green? We could do the moss green. Mm, or the olive yellow. I think the olive yellow might work because it's slightly greeny, but it works with our yellow and yellow and orange theme. So that's the olive yellow. I look in the camera and it looks like it says sap yellow. I can't, obviously I can't read. And you'll see what I mean. We've got a bit of a green going on, but also yellowy. I think it works. It's going to look really similar to that. Even though we, that's not what we, uh, this here. Even though this isn't the colour we used because we mixed up two colours. A mustard and a... Was it the elm green? It, cr it created this colour. But anyway, it's okay. It's fun to play, isn't it? Play around with all the different colours. Gosh, it's getting warm. I don't know if it's going to rain later. Or um, we sort of forecast thunderstorms. But we had loads yesterday and overnight. So I don't know if that's it now. It doesn't feel quite so sticky as yesterday, which is nice. It's the humidity. So the boys are saying, oh, we've got this all this hot weather to go. And I said, well, it's not so bad after June. June tends to be very humid and somehow seems to be extra hot, um, particularly at night and things like that. I don't know whether it's just getting used to the hot because, you know, we're not. It suddenly has jumped up. You know, a few weeks ago it was only 10 degrees and today it's 25. It's like, ugh, it's not even 10 degrees at night. So suddenly we're having to get used to it. And so by the time it comes to July and August, we'll be a bit more used to the heat. 
um, which helps a lot. But also it doesn't seem to be, that looks quite brown, but I think that's fine. I can hear my neighbour sneezing. Right, so that's that one. So we've done these two, haven't we, today? I think that's plenty for one day. Let's come out just a tad so you can see that. But I'm going to come back and do others because I'm really enjoying this page and I've still got colours that I want to show you. So don't worry, I'll be doing more. Um, we'll probably go up the page next time. I just moved across so I didn't smudge the um, white pen, which has incidentally gone pink, neon pink. I didn't think they did, but it has. That's interesting. Hmm, I'm going to test that. But in between videos, I'm going to put a white pen on my swatch chart on every colour and let you know which ones go pink um, because that's really annoying. So uh, I'll do that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like, comment, and I will see you next time. Happy colouring!